Focus Challenger panel is scary. So we're gonna change it. See what it looks like on the inside. <laughs> Only two screws holding this in. That's so nice. It's not that bad. Just a little bad. Fuck, I need another 40. All right. All right, is it labeled? No, it's not labeled. All right, guys, so today we are placing a Challenger 200 amp panel to a brand new Square D panel because this thing is actually shot and all the buses are coming off. Today, I'm gonna take you step by step to show you exactly how to change out one of these really ugly panels and make it look as clean and nice as you possibly can. I love these videos because panels don't move, so I'm able to record the entire thing, and no panel is the same. I've never run into the same panel, so every situation is different. We're gonna start on this one by labeling every single wire. It is time to shut it down. go I don't know that that would ever come back on in all honesty all right so after we have all of our wires labeled and we turn off each individual breaker to make sure that we don't cause any issues to any appliances that are hooked up as well as turn off the main breaker then we can start taking apart all of our wiring so what I do is I take off all the hot wires first neutrals and grounds and then I take out all the lock nuts associated. Did anybody see that bus bomb? The wires under the breakers are usually not that hard to remove but the ground and neutrals because of where the bus bar is for those is kind of a pain in the ass but even more so those yellow buttons are horrific. You basically have to break each one to get them off. Thankfully my new panel is not even going to need any type of connector. I'll show you. This is the ground identifier. Stop to the thing so funny. All right, so as I'm removing these wires, I do my best to straighten them out and get them right, as cleanly as possible because the goal is to remove them nicely out of the oh connectors that they're in. And if they're all bent and messed up, then they're not really going to move, and it's going to make it 10 times harder for me to get this panel off. But so now that these are all removed, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to remove the main feeders from the main breaker. And I do this with just a set of Allen keys and I'm just carefully removing everything out of the way so we have no issues here. And for some reason, this neutral wire is ridiculously long. I don't know who would do this or who would even want to fight this wire to bend like this. But this is definitely an interesting setup. And so basically, I'm just going to remove my A phase and my B phase off of the main breaker and straighten them out so that way I can get the bushing and the lock nut off of this because this is the last thing that I need to remove until I can actually take the full panel off. This is like my main issue right this second. So I'm gonna tape off the ends, just God forbid. It's just a safety precaution, I always do it. I know that's a little bit of overkill, it's a lot of fucking tape. <laughs> I can kind of tell whoever installed this didn't use any Penetrox because the wires were really hard to remove out of the lugs. So I'm going to put some Penetrox on it when I put it back in because that was just ridiculous. Mm, wow. I had to put that in there because, you know, that shit happens sometimes. You got to watch the wire. It will come back to hit you in the face. I'm going to show you why. Charger panels suck so bad. <laughs> it's
It's also really important to note that you have to be careful with the wiring that's existing, the service wire as well as just the individual branch circuit wires because they're old. And if you end up nicking them, you might not notice or they might crumble and you might have issues later. So it's really important to make sure you're actually taking care of these wires. And that's why it took me so long to remove that main feeder wire because you can tell that the bushing was kind of tight. And thank you to whoever decided to take all of the ground wires off of the branch circuit and splice them together so tightly all the way up the panel that you cannot remove them. I don't know why people do that, but people need to stop doing that. Just put them on each individual lug on the ground bar. It's not that serious because now I have to straighten out all of that wire. And now I am just trying to remove these yellow connectors. The button connectors that I told you are terrible. And now that I did, I'm taking off the front part of the panel and I'm just gonna bring it down. I still have my service wire going through because I can't get it off until the panel's off. So I'm just gonna slide the panel out very carefully and just avoid nicking any of those service wires. Watch this. Anytime I'm changing out a Challenger panel, I can like instantly see issues with it. Like for example, this one, the whole back of the bus bar wasn't even bolted in fully. I'm pretty sure it was missing two bolts and it was moving around a lot, which isn't like that serious, but it definitely shouldn't be happening. So we're going to install a nice new square D because you guys know I like square D. So we're going to basically take the staples out of the last row here of this Romex because this panel is significantly taller than the Challenger panel, which means I need to make up space. And the last set of staples are kind of aimed downward. So if I could take these out, I can straighten it and make it look a little bit cleaner. There was also a service outlet under the panel. I had to take that out and we're going to move it to the left side of the panel because like I said, this thing just fits. I got really lucky here, especially with where the service wire is coming in. So like an idiot, I didn't charge my mic the night before and at this point it had died. So we are gonna do the full voiceover because you're not gonna be able to hear anything that I'm saying. So basically what I'm doing now after I mounted the panel, you can see at the top area of the new panel, they have these like quick lock things where you don't need a connector and you just push the wire all the way in the back and then a cover goes over it at the end before you put the panel cover on. They're super convenient and it makes life so much easier, but you also do have to be strategic in the way that you place your wire so that way it doesn't mess up the plastic because it's just plastic. And so I'm basically landing them all in line with how they came under the panel. And then once I get them all in, I'm putting the lock nuts back on the wiring that needs a little bit bigger because those quick locks are only good for 14 gauge and 12 gauge wire. Anything higher, it needs to go into an actual connector. So this 30 amp wire here, I'm putting it on the right hand side of the quick lock and I'm gonna put that in an actual hole and put a connector and a lock nut on it. And I had to do that for a few sets of wires. I think in total I had to do it for four. The quick lock system is also at the bottom of the panel. You can't see it from the angle that I'm at, but it does allow for top and bottom access. It's just not convenient for anything above um, 20 amp wire, like I said before. So now that we have all of the wires in, that looks like an absolute mess. I tried to straighten some of them out while I was placing them, but realistically, I have to individually separate the conductors and straighten them out first by themselves as they're going into the panel. And then it'll look a little bit cleaner, I swear, because right now it looks ridiculous. But so I'm just putting back the PVC that was in on the right hand side. That looks like it goes to outdoor outlets. So I'm just putting that back in. And then on the left hand side, I'm reinstalling this service outlet. This is for their Verizon and their internet. So I wanted to make sure that they still had access to it right near the box, which is why I put it on the left side. I just figured it'd be more convenient. So now that we have that in, we are going to nicely start to separate all the wires. So first thing, I, if you can see at the top, I push all of the neutral and hot conductors up and I isolate the ground conductors. That way I can push them into the corner of the panel and have them come down. Now, these panels are not always pretty, especially if they were in a smaller, tighter panel. 
where the wires weren't that long because what happens now is I put this giant panel in and the wire doesn't reach. So what has to happen now is we need to make tails on anything that's too short and we need to extend the wire and bring it down into the bus bars. And I didn't have to do that a lot for the grounds. I more so had to do it for the neutral conductors, but it's better than trying to pull them and get them into where they have to go. An alternative would be to put a trough or a junction box above that or to the side of that, but I just didn't have the room for that. So it was a little bit easier just to work with what I had and it saved the customers the money. So as you can see, I landed all the grounds and now I'm separating the neutral and the hot conductors, leaving the hots up still away from the panel and I'm bringing the neutral conductors down and I'm straightening them and landing them on the bus bar. First means of disconnect, you do not need to separate the neutrals and the ground. You just need to have that bonding screw in the top right hand corner that comes with square D panels. And the nice thing about square D is they don't ask you to have separate like buy separate ground bars unless you do have to isolate. So what's really nice is on the both sides, left and right, the bus bar for the grounds and the neutrals comes all the way down. It makes the panel look so much nicer. So as you can see, I did land all the neutral conductors. And now what I'm going to do before I land the hot conductors is I'm going to put the main service feeders back in. And I do that so that way the neutral and the ground conductors stay snug in the back. And for whatever reason, if anybody had to remove a hot conductor, they would be e able to easily do it because it's in front of the service cable, not behind. So normally I would cut these service conductors, but I didn't really like how little slack there was. So I left them both at the exact length that they were at because God forbid somebody ever had to come back in here. If you don't leave them long enough or you cut them just right, the other person after you might not be able to do what they need to do and they might need to run completely new wire. So my B phase wire was very like perfect size. So I left that one as it is. And then my neutral conductor was way too long. So we're gonna cut that down to size. I, I still left a decent amount of slack if you touch the top of the panel, but you don't need to be doing loops and all that mess with the neutral what? conductor. It, it eliminates space in the panel and it's just not what? even necessary really so i cut that back stripped it oh, and landed it and then like for my a phase conductor i kept that longer that. just in case like i said anything were to happen so it is a little bit uglier it's not like the most perfect bends but like I said, I would rather leave more slack if it's if it's there. Somebody said on one of my videos that if the feeders come from the bottom, do you have to flip the panel over? And that's not true. They can, in United States, go inside of the actual panel and be with branch circuits. That's totally normal in the United States, and I do it for almost every single panel. The only time I flip the panels around is for QO panels that the customer has specifically requested them be upside down and the feeders are coming from the top. So like I said, that's the only time I do that. Otherwise, it's completely fine. As long as you have the space that you need inside the panel, you can come in from the bottom and go all the way at the top. It saves room and it actually keeps the wire long. God forbid something were to happen. So now I got my wires in nice and snug and I'm going to now put all the breakers in and connect all of the branch circuit hot conductors into each individual breaker. I took a picture of all the old breakers and I made sure I put them all back. And as you can see, this is what it looks like. Some of them are a little bit tight, but I'd really rather not splice a ridiculous amount of wires if I don't have to. So if they make it to the breaker, I usually leave them. It's just not the prettiest, but it does the job. And so now what I did have the customer do is I had him run around and once I popped a breaker on, told me what was on and what was off so that way I can give him some sort of panel schedule because there was absolutely nothing existing. So this is what she looks like at the end after I put the panel cover on and I labeled it. And I think it looks way better to be completely honest with you. Even the branch circuits coming in, I made them as clean as I possibly could. Look at all those nice new breakers.